put it now. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, everyone. I welcome you all to the second day of the two week international faculty development program on research tools by the Department of Artificial Intelligence and Data Science of Ishuri Engineering College, Ramapuram. Extremely revered to announce today's chief guest, Dr. Safiya Navi. She is a scientist under WASE Kiran IPR in the Council of Technology Information, Forecasting and Assessment. She is also a patent consultant and is an IPR consultant for all the top engineering colleges in Chennai. She is the associate professor in the department of CSC of KC3 in College of Technology. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation, ma'am, in spite of your busy schedule. I request all the participants to switch on their videos for the photo session. Thank you so much, participants. Once again, thank you so much for accepting our invitation, ma'am. The session is yours. A very good morning to one and all present here. Am I audible? And you are audible. Yes. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank HOD ma'am, uh, Mrs. Kalai Selvi and Dr. Nirmala for providing me an opportunity to present in the international FDP. Now I will share my slides. Are you able to see my screen? I have shared the PPT. Are you able to see my Kindly confirm, are you able to see my screen, the PPT? Yes, ma'am. Okay, shall I start, ma'am? Yes, ma'am, you can. Yeah. Um, this is the second day of the Research Tools uh, FDP program, and today I am here to speak about patent drafting and filing. So, the agenda of today's program will be patentability and what are not inventions according to Indian Patent Act and how to write a patent specification in detail. We will see how to write a patent. What are the mandatory requirements of a patent application? What is a design patent? How to file? What are the basic forms of filing and the importance of patents in universities and colleges? So these are the about things which I'm going to discuss in today's session. So patents, so as ma'am has discussed yesterday, in day one, a patent is a techno legal document. Why we call it techno? Because you are dealing with the technical information. It is called as legal because you are uh, protecting your document with the help of patent act law. So that is why it is called as techno legal document. And nowadays, most of the information is found in the patents when compared to the journal papers. All the manufacturers, everyone, they provide their information mainly in patents. Protect 
with the help of patents. So that is why you can find novel information, inventive concepts in patents majority, majority than your paper publications. That is why patents are gaining more importance nowadays. This is what was discussed yesterday, like what is patentability? You know now what is a patent? Duration of a patent is for 20 years and it is a territorial right. So all these are basics of a patent. What is patentability? You need to satisfy three components. First one is your invention should be novel. Second one, it should have some technical advancement over the prior art. And third one, it should be of industrial applicability. So these are all the three criteria which has to be satisfied. Generally, you will get a patent. Now, we will see what are not inventions. So this was discussed yesterday. And now we need to be very clear what we should not write in a patent. What are not inventions as per Indian Patent Act 1970. The first one, there are some 12 to 15. These are also inventions. You please kindly see the heading. They are also inventions. But they... Sorry yes, to interrupt. No problem. Uh, your uh, slides are not moving. It's done okay. in the first slide. Okay, okay. Yes, Mama. One minute. Ma'am, uh, are the slides moving now? Yes, ma'am, it's fine now. Okay, is it fine? Shall I continue, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Oh. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. yeah, thank you, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, if anything, kindly notify so that I will uh, sort out the issue. This is what was discussed. Now we will move on to what are not inventions according to the Indian Patents Act. First one is here, frivolous or misleading inventions. Frivolous means the silly things which are not serious. They cannot be patented. For example, I have given, few people will say that this particular machine will give 100% efficiency. That is practically not possible. So those things cannot be patented. And any machine which is giving an output without any input. There are no input parameters, no control over the machine, but they will say that they are gaining some output. So these silly things are will come under frivolous and these things are not patented in as per Indian Patent Act. Second one is inventions which are contrary to public order or morality. For example, if someone is saying that he is going to print making a machine which is going to make some currency notes, which is against the public order or morality. Though it is an invention, but it is against the public, so those things cannot be patented. And again, the second example, what I have given is adulteration of food products. You might invent a machine which may be innovative, but this is against some order and law. So those things cannot be patented. Now, third one, we will move on to mere discovery of a scientific principle. So there is there are some scientific principles. For example, you would have heard of E is equal to MC square. This is already been discovered by some scientists. Okay. So again, you cannot take that and you cannot patent. For example, if you are making some application out of that E is equal to MC square, those things can be patented. So this is where most people like... Uh, they are not able to understand what is has already been discovered by some scientists. You cannot take that thing and patent. If you are drawing some application out of those, then those things can be patented. So this is the third thing which cannot be patented. Fourth one is your mere discovery of a new form of a known substance. So your substance is already known. You are extracting some salt of it, some polymer of it, some ether of it. So it is again a substance from the main component. So those things cannot be patented. 
I will give you a simple example. Neem leaf is there. It is known to everyone. So you cannot powder that and you cannot claim that you have done something new. That is a, just a powder form of a known substance. So those things are not patentable under Indian Patents Act. So fifth one is substance obtained by a mere admixture. You cannot combine two or three things and say that it is novel. It's mere mixture of known ingredients. Ingredients are known to everyone. You are just combining them. Not combine them and tell that it is a novel one. So that is the fifth one, which is not patentable under Indian Patent Act. Why I am telling is, each country has got a different patent act. E US has got a different patent act. Few things which I have told now are not patentable, are patentable under US Patent Act. That is why I am underlining that these things are not patentable under Indian Patent Act. Fine. Next is the arrangement or rearrangement of known devices. For example, I have given you the example there. You, have, you cannot fit a torch with a bucket and say that it is something novel. An umbrella with a fan. You are just combining two things. So these things are not patentable again. Method of article, agriculture and horticulture. So every person, every farmer will have his own way of doing the farming. So those things cannot be patented. Method, all the methods cannot be patented. Then process for medicine, the way a surgeon performs an operation, it is his skill. A doctor performs an operation based on his skill. So again, those things cannot be patented. If a doctor is giving a treatment for any disease, so that such a type of treatment again is not patented. Now plants and animals, you readily available microorganisms are there in nature. Even those things which are readily available in nature, microorganisms, if you find out it is called as a discovery, you cannot patent them. So that is why it is called as a plant as a whole or a part cannot be patented. So these things are separately come under plant varieties. There is something called plant variety. Like you have got patents, trademarks, designs, and you have something got called plant variety. This plants, animals are protected under that act. And method of doing a business. People have their own way of doing a business. So such things cannot be patented. Your mathematical formula, which has already been derived by someone, method of doing a business cannot be patented. Your computer programs, all your computer programs cannot be patented. You can go for a copyright. Few people, you may have a concept. One person may write it in a Java language and claim that his lines of coding is better. And another person will write the same concept in Python and claim that this is better. So that is why we don't go for a patent for a computer program. As per Indian Patent Act, all your computer programs, whatever in whichever language you write, you can get a copyright for your programs. Patents are not granted for computer programs. And one more thing I would like to make sure here, if your computer program is incorporated in some hardware and that hardware has got some efficiency, then such a type of applications are getting patented nowadays. As such, I repeat, only computer programs are not, cannot be patented. You need to go only for a copyright, provided you take the program, you incorporate that in some hardware, show that hardware is having some better efficiency then those things can be patented. Now all your literary, dramatic works, musical works, artistic works, these things cannot be patented. Why? Because they have already been covered under copyright regime. That is why they don't come under patents. Now this is your scheme for rule for performing some mental act. Chess, we all know that many, many children or many people, they play chess in different manner. So again, those things cannot be patented. He may be, he or she may be innovative in playing a chess, but that such a type of methodology again cannot be patented. Method of teaching, we have got good professors. They have their own method of teaching. Innovative methods of teachings are there. Even those things cannot be patented. 
that what i told the third thing one method of presentation of information the way i present again i am presenting here for some international fdp many are presenting today though it may be online or offline they are, they will have their own method of presentation method of presentation cannot be patented as per indian patent act now topography of integrated circuit now this is already been covered under semiconductor layout designs act which was introduced in 2000 so all your integrated circuits ics they can be protected under semiconductor layout design they cannot be again patented the and last one is your traditional knowledge what is traditional knowledge that which we acquire from our forefathers from our future from our four uh, previous generations for example we know that turmeric and neem has got some antiseptic properties turmeric is used for curing wounds healing wounds so this everybody knows so this traditional knowledge what we gain from our forefathers cannot be patented and this particular thing the 15th one whatever i have discussed now this is patentable in us in us you can go and check a person has got a patent for a uh, turmeric and neem why because they are having the properties of healing so this has been patented in us but as per indian patents act this is not patentable so these are all the 15 things which we need to understand before drafting our application we need to check whether our invention comes under this 15 if it comes under this 15 criteria then a patent will not be granted it will be just like that rejected that is why i have discussed this inventions they are also inventions but they are not patentable and we have got one more thing called section 4 as per indian patent act which deals with atomic energy you are doing something innovative but that involves atomic energy so again those things are not patentable atomic energy as per indian rule it is causing some disruption so those things are not patentable so yesterday we saw the three criteria for patentability now today we are seeing all the rules which are not patentable before drafting now my main topic is for today is drafting am i audible or the slides moving ma'am yes ma'am okay i'll proceed so now before drafting what are all the things you need to know what is my invention what is it all about is it patentable so this you will go and check in the 15 criteria which i have told is it novel whether my invention is novel those three criteria patentability has got three concepts novel novelty technical advancement capable of industrial application so you will go and check in these three criteria then only you will proceed towards drafting prior art what is prior art as per our journal papers it is called as literature review the same thing here it is called as prior art so what is already been done what are the flaws there that you can take and rectify fine and oral disclosure before patenting don't tell your invention to anyone that is called as oral disclosure you shouldn't have published in any of the conference or your publications journal papers that is called as printed publication should not be available before you go for a patent and prior use it should not be in usage in the public domain so these are all the things which you need to check before you move on to your drafting a patent once your patent is ready something you are drafting and that will be read by who all will read your patent your patent office why because you are submitting there they are there are the examiners and controllers who will read your patent to examine it what exactly is your invention licensee or assignee who is licensee you can assign your patent give your patent to another person you are, can assign it to another person so such a person is called as assignee similarly you can license your patent to someone so that person will read your patent quote if at all if there is an infringement what infringement your idea is protected 
without your knowledge somebody is copying your idea so this act is called as infringement whenever there is an infringement the case will go to the court and court will read your patent like what exactly happened so court will read your patent then technical peers your own people who are in the technical domain who are always interested to know what is happening in this domain skilled persons those people will read your patent your competitors usually competitors goes for these colleges universities and the companies samsung all these are called as competitors commercial players those who are moving in the domain daily they are going to read your patent for the innovate to find out the innovative things and the general public it is going to be there in the public domain so the general public also can read your patent now we will move on to patent specification what is specification you need to write your patent now as i have told it is a techno legal document techno because it involves some technology inside it has got some technical advancement legal because you are protecting it with the help of patent act that is why it is called as techno legal document now you are going to write a patent specification which has got the following i will discuss it now you need to write in such a way that the patent office accepts it the patent patent office accepts it based on some rules so this is your complete specification i will just talk about this later i will finish off with your provisional first what is provisional provisional there are two types of specifications first one is called as provisional and the second one is called as complete specification provisional is whenever you have some new idea you can go for a provisional provisional will contain any claims a complete specification means it should contain claims so that is the main difference between your provisional and your complete provisional is will mark the priority date so today you are filing from today on the priority goes for your application it is being protected from today from today's date a provisional i repeat a provisional specification does not contain claims it's moving on to your complete a complete is also similar one everything you will write similar to your provisional by that one additional thing will be your claims so this is your provisional when you will go for provisional when you are in some emergency you are going to submit your thesis before that i want to protect once your thesis is out it is in the public domain you are releasing it to the public so once it is out you should protect your work so those at that time you can go for your provisional specification provisional gives priority for your application so when you are going before submission of the thesis you can go for a provisional specification <laughs> and inventors are there say suppose you are in some company you have invented something you are going to leave that company so before leaving that company once you leave anybody from that company can take your application and file so before you leave the company you can protect your work with the help of your provisional specification so these are all the different conditions under which you can go for provisional specification and one more important thing once you file a provisional specification within 12 months from the date when you file provisional within 12 months you need to file a complete otherwise your application will be abandoned Otherwise, it will be abandoned. What is abandoned? That priority will go. Again, you have to file from the first. So that is the meaning of abandoned. What is complete? As I have already discussed, you need to file. At a stretch, you can go for complete also. Many people are now filing complete on the go. In the first step itself, they will go for complete specification. because they forget to file complete within 12 months so nowadays people are moving towards only complete specification when you write you write claims and file at a stress such that it will not be a burden for you otherwise you need to keep track of the time and submit the complete within 12 months a patent office strictly works based on the date and time deadlines once that date is barred nothing could be done 
even if you want to get some some more time you should have asked before not later once the date is barred nothing could be done you know that your deadline is on 31st july so before that you can go for a extra time not after that so patent office strictly works based on the time and date here a complete is you need to describe your invention working methodology the best way to do it even if a common person and reads your application he should know how to work on with your invention so that is how it should be written preamble i am now i am teaching you how to write how to draft the patent now preamble what is preamble preamble is the introductory part introductory part of a patent a provisional I, you can just see the provisional preamble is the following specification describes the invention it will have only the description whereas the complete you should start with the preamble this is very important the patent office raises the objection if this particular sentence is not there if it is complete you need to follow the the following specification particularly describes the invention there it is up to describe for the provisional here and the manner in which it is to be performed this particular line is important i am repeating it why because many applications are rejected just because this line is not found so this is a preamble which is a standard statement for all the patent applications you can follow this the content will be yours but the starting point the preamble we will need to start in this manner it's now drafting so your description will discuss the invention what is it all about the claims what are claims patent office gives protection for your invention only for the claims written only for the claims you are claiming that so and so is the element which is having so much efficacy so that will define the boundary of your monopoly only your claims are protected not the other content which you write claims what you claim that your invention your invention should be clearly described as well as you need to claim it this is these are all the 10 points which are mandatory to be present in a patent application parts of a specification that is first thing is your title i will discuss each and everything in detail title should be not less greater than 15 words it can be less than or equal to 15 words but not more than that field of invention you need to specify whether it is mechanical engineering chemical engineering or computer engineering that is called as field of invention what is background what exactly you are going to do what is already there what are the flaws in it and what you are going to correct in that flaws that is called as background just an overview objects if there are any elements involved to perform your invention you will have some elements the help of which i am doing so that is called as objects of invention summary you need to precise it you need to write in short like what exactly you are going to tell that is called a summary brief description of the drawings a patent can have drawings all your drawings should be in separate sheets even if there are 10 drawings patent office is accepting it provided each drawing should be in a separate page right need to explain your drawings i will show you each and everything in detail next detailed description of the invention you need to describe your invention last comes your claims finally abstract it should be some almost it should be for up to 150 words it can be plus or minus but try not to exceed and finally is your drawings this is how it should be arranged now now title this i have already told you don't use some fancy words in the title inventor's name should not be there the word patent should not be mentioned in the title the words in other languages you cannot use tamil hindi any word which is fancy from that you cannot take and keep that as your title 
names of abbreviations are not allowed in a title. So this is already we know why, because even in journal papers we are following this. Abbreviations are not allowed. And fancy words, you cannot claim in the title itself that yours is the best furniture. No. So these are all called as fancy terms. Magnificent, best furniture, beautiful. So such fancy terms should be avoided in the title. If such a title is there, summarily it will be rejected. Next we will move on. A title should not be more broad, broad or generic. For example, I cannot just like the tell networks. It is very much broad. I cannot tell it is wireless networks. That is also something broad. I should narrow down my title. I can tell like wireless sensor networks. That sounds little like I am narrowing down. It is a network wherein it is a wireless network and I am dealing with sensors. So a true a broad title will not be accepted. You have to narrow down what exactly you are going to tell. Wireless sensor networks. In that you can talk about any type of sensor. Okay? So these are all the examples which I have given. Automated slab hammer to remove orthopedic implants. What is your invention? Make it very precise and try to put that in your 15 words. 15 words is maximum. That is maximum is only 15 words. You can put down even less to that. Field of invention. You need to mention all the patent applications submitted to the patent office are classified. They will classify based on the subject. The subject, a broad classification, whether it goes under mechanical or chemical or computer science. That is why they require this field of invention. This is very important. Say, suppose you are going to invent in computer science, but you write it as chemical, then it is wrongly classified. Again, it is a loss for you. That is why they are asking you to mention the field of invention. In computer science, I am going to deal with deal with wireless networks something like that so the broader classification here is important In that i am going to deal with communications first line will be better that you specify that it comes under physics or chemistry anything because that you know you are working on it and you know that this is my field of invention this is your background and object what is background background is what I have discussed is nothing but your prior art. In journal papers, it is called as literature review. What has already gone before? A patent is granted for a product or a process. It can come out as a product or process. What is process? Say, suppose these pharmaceuticals, they go for a process to make a medicine. So such process is patented. You can invent something new, globally new, which is not known to anyone. First type. Second type is you can take a problem. Somebody has already given a solution for that, but that solution has got some flaws. You are going to rectify it. So that rectification also gets a patent. That is why you need to go and check the background. What others have done, there will be some flaws in that. You can take that and correct it. So that is called as background and what objects you are using to rectify that. Your invention will hold some objects, some elements, some components to make that invention successful. Those objects has to be defined clearly in your application. So we will move on to the broadest claim. Specify solutions to the problem. First thing to understand is what is the problem? What is the solution? A simple example I will give you. When fountain pain was invented, the problem with the fountain pain was it was not able to write on rough surfaces. It was not, you cannot use a fountain pain on any surface. That is why ballpoint pain came into force. A ballpoint pain, as we all know, you can use it on any surface, almost. Whereas, use a fountain pain, you need to have a smooth surface. It, can be used only on a smooth surface. So the drawback was you cannot use a fountain pane on a rough surfaces. So that is the problem. That problem of writing on rough surfaces is rectified with the help of a ballpoint pen. So problem, solution. You need to write in this manner. 
identify the problem what others have said about the solution and what you are going to say about the solution and what are the advantages this way you need to write your application what are the advantages you need to claim the advantages of your invention this is a brief description of the drawings i told you a patent application can have n number of drawings the drawing has to be number figure 1 so and so it claims so and so things figure 2 it deals about so and so things and one more thing i will show you pictorially drawing should you should name you should number the components you should not write anything in the drawing this is your detailed description efficiently describe what all you need to tell about your invention and one more thing a patent application you can write up to 30 pages and 10 claims that is free if you go beyond that only that is being charged by the patent office up to 30 pages you can write so you can feel free to write about your invention what all you want to disclose you can write it why because he is already giving you 30 pages and up to 10 claims are free if you want to go beyond that only those things are charged by the patent office claims this is the main important part of any patent application the patent is granted only for the claims written in it you will write so much there i have discussed so much right title you need to write background field of invention object of invention detailed description so much we have described no you patent office is giving you a liberty to write everything but when it comes for protection patent is granted they look only into the claims what you have claimed so kindly see there whatever is claimed needs to be described in your claim you are claiming few things so and so will work in this ambience this pressure only you are inventing some device that device will work in this temperature up to 90 degrees means that is what you are claiming so your claim should be a broader claim for example now what i have told is you have invented something that particular device will work in 90 degrees means don't be very specific to 90 degrees you can have a range it will work from 90 degrees to 120 degrees why because if you mention 90 degrees only that will be protected in future even if the same device works for 100 degrees they will not give you a protection for that that is why your claims should be broader and specify the range but don't stick on to a particular value okay? so these are your claims there is again some uh, grammar for writing some procedure for writing your claims the claim should have three parts first one is your preamble the introductory part transition that is the connecting part and the body that will have some elements the preamble as i have said you is your introductory statement you can start with a vehicle a method a composition a composition will be used by chemistry applicants preamble should be consistent a method of operation right and it will not be too limiting for example they have given you an example a two wheeled vehicle can be anything you, know, you need not be so specific like it is a bicycle two wheeled vehicle means it can be a moped also it can be anything so try to write some broader claims if you are too specific and in in future if you want to expand something then you will not be able to expand it why because you have already said it is a bicycle now you cannot convert that to moped so that is why they tell you you write some broader claims broader claims are easy to be granted and in future the applicant is in on the safer side now i am telling it as two wheeled vehicle in future i can convert it to moped Ask itself is I say it is a bicycle, then I cannot convert that to moped. So that is the reason why they ask you to write broader claims, fine? And dependent claims. What is dependent claims? There are two types of claims: independent claims and dependent claims. Independent is standalone; it doesn't rely on anyone. Dependent claim is it relies on your independent claims. 
the first part you will write an apparatus as claimed in claim one so that is dependent second point is always dependent on the first point you cannot write the second point once the first point is not there the second point doesn't rule so such is the uh, post of your dependent claim so these are all the examples making tea how you can write a method for making tea a method for making plant based beverages method will come under process claim methods all your methods will come under process so all these are different examples all your chemical patents will start with a composition all your drugs medicines nowadays new new medicines are coming in all your medicines will be started as a composition for treating malaria fine your device device is a product claim last one can you see your device for mounting your telephone whenever i tell device it is a product so that is what i told patent is granted for either a product or a process product is some entity process is some methodology you are following to make something so transition so first one was preamble second one is your transition what is transition that is that connecting part your preamble and your body has to be connected with the help of a transition and apparatus is your preamble for shaking a chair is your transition part comprising of so now again there are two types of transitions open ended and closed ended this is again very important this is again a limiting factor for your claims open ended transitions means in future you can add something new that is why it is called as open ended okay? closed ended means i am just closing it in future i will not be able to add or delete something from that usually open ended is generally used for any type of applications be it mechanical or your computer science this closed ended are particularly used by this chemical composition pharmaceutical applications why because you are making a medicine it should contain only four substances that's all nothing more than that or nothing less than that so such people such applications all your chemical applications you can take and see your chemical applications all your chemical applications will go for closed ended consist of means that's all it will consist of only three substances not more than that fine so that is your open ended and closed ended always it is a best practice to go for open ended transitions comprising in future i can add any more components to that or whatever is already there i can delete also so those things are addition and deletion is possible in open ended whereas in closed ended no once i define i strictly define it i cannot do any manipulations in that markus claims are the structure which deal with the structure of your chemical components this is basically there only for your chemical structures chemical components now body of the claim here you will write what are all the elements involved to do your invention your working working principle come under your body what are all the elements you need to describe the elements and how those elements are connected with each other to give you an example then you will understand apparatus for holding items comprising one leg top configured to the support at least one leg so if your invention is having some components you need to describe each and every component how those components are interlinked that has to be written now this is wrong what i have projected here is to show you that apparatus for holding items comprising table will have four legs 16 screws and a top that's all how they are related that has to be written it's just you are describing mere description is not allowed in a patent what is what is not allowed you need to describe how they are interrelated make a product how they are interrelated 
A patent is you are textualizing your invention. The way you feel, how it works, has to be put down in the words. That is your patent. Now this is your badminton racket. Now see here, I have written, I have taken a simple example such that you understand. A game device. See, I am having a broader term, game device. I didn't mention any game. This is how you need to write. I didn't mention any game. You all know what for, what game it is, what for it is used. But be on a broader claim. I have just written a game device comprising a handle, a head portion and a protrusion. Only three components are there. And types of claims. I have already discussed independent claims and dependent claims. I will show you the example. Independent claim is the broadest claim and at least your patent application should have at least one independent claim. You can have n number of dependent claims in an application provided that should depend on your first claim. These are all your dependent claims. Dependent claims can be n number. When you can have independent claims, one or two you can have it. See to that all your dependent claims are connected to your independent claims. Now you can see here a game device having a handle, a throat portion, a head portion connected to the throat portion. How it is connected? Wherein the improvement comprises a protrusion which is secured to the handle. Second one which is highlighted in red color is your dependent claim. That is why I have highlighted that in red color. A game device according to claim one. Again, I am not going to describe that game device here. According to claim one. This according to claim one, please underline and keep. This is your dependent claim. It is dependent on the previous claim. First one is your independent claim. Now I hope this you can understand what is independent claim and dependent claim. Claims should start with independent. Then you can move on with your dependent claims. There is some grammar, some way of writing your claims. Claim punctuation. Where you need to put the comma, where you have to keep the semicolon, where colon is required. So that example you can see here. Preamble, comma, transition phase. What is transition phase? That comprising, comprises, consists of, is your transition phase. After that one colon, then elements. How many elements are there? Each and every element is separated with the help of a semicolon. This is the perfect way of writing your claims. If you are not following this, even this is raised as an objection by the examiner. You are submitting your application. Your patent application is thoroughly examined by your examiners at the patent office. Fine. These are all the objections they raise once you get your FER. First examination report, these are all the objections they raise. If you don't write it properly, even this is raised as one of the objection that you have not followed the rules of claim drafting or patent drafting. Can you see here an apparatus that is your preamble? After which a comma is there, comprising. After which a semicolon is there, then you write a plurality. What are all the elements there? Each element has to be separated by a semicolon. For that purpose only I have given one example. Proper antecedent basis. So each and every element used here has to be written. If you are using the element for the first time, you will use with A or AND. For the first time, if you are using the same element, once you have defined it, you are using that same element for the second time. From then on, you can use the words they and said. The and said. Fine. I will give you an example. See here, a game device comprising for the first time, I am writing that handle. Ear handle and ear head position. That is called as antecedent. That is connected to the handle. Handle, I am using it for the second time. So, I have used that with the. Or the handle or you can use said handle. Anti-spillage. Anti I am using it for the first time. So, I am using an. Remember, when you use any element, introduce any element for the first time, you use a or an. 
further when you are making it repeating it then you can go for the words they the or said fine right? this is strictly being followed so it is better that you follow and you escape from the objections raised now you are drawings are there drawings will be numbered those numbers you need to incorporate in your claims and apparatus that apparatus is numbered as 10 that apparatus will have many elements elements will be numbered so those numbers whatever number you are giving in your drawing the same thing has to be incorporated in your claims this is summary of your invention what is this abstract abstract should be greater than or equal to 150 words now nobody will sit and count but still with the size of your abstract they will be able to find out more or less it should cover 150 words fine your abstract should have some your essence of your invention see to that your abstract has the essence of your invention and you need to mention some important keywords used in your specification so this is how you need to write abstract the same we write for our journal papers a little more one or two points will be added up here that's it and main point is what is the problem and what is the solution you have found out that has to be clearly mentioned in your abstract you can see the second point there what is the technical problem existing and what type of solution you are giving for it and you can also talk about one or two advantages of your solution over the previous one now requirements of your application once you have drafted everything now you need to submit your application to the patent office what is your requirement mandatory things only if these things are there the patent office will accept your application so what are they it is form 1 form 1 is mandatory there wherein you will fill all your basic details like your name address phone number email id all these things are contained in your form 1 and your title of the invention form 2 will contain your provisional or complete specification whether it will ask whether you are going to file your provisional or complete there you need to clearly mention whether it is a provisional or complete if it is a provisional then within 12 months you are supposed to file a complete otherwise it will be abandoned what is abandoned the priority which you are seeking will be lost fine then drawings should be there i told you each and every drawing should be in a separate sheet don't put up all the drawings in a single paper and submit that is not accepted all these are objections even if they accept this will come as an objection in your fer first examination report form 3 what is form 3 foreign filing details of the said invention stating that you are filing you are disclosing your invention only in india you are disclosing the same in some other country even that has to be mentioned declaration as to form 5 is declaration as to inventorship so sometimes the applicant and the inventor are the same sometimes the applicant will be the college inventor will be some individual person so that is why form 5 is given power of attorney this power of attorney there are two ways to file your patent application one is physical filing you yourself directly can go to the patent office and file it or you can give it to a patent attorney or patent agent if you are giving it to a patent attorney then form 26 has to be given why because you are authorizing that agent to do the work for you that is why form 26 is there you are authorizing a patent agent to work on your application so that is why form 26 is given and accordingly fees has to be given fees has to be given few forms are free few forms need to pay the fees to the government so that is why this is the point is fees and proof of right if you are assigning someone then you need to give them the right so that is called as proof of right so now we have dealt with your patents how to write it how to draft it in detail and how to file what are the mandatory forms now we will move on to design patent what is design patent for what we have seen is it consists only of your technical concept design patent as the name suggest patent is given only for the design only for the design the plates are there porcelain plates melamine plates are there with beautiful designs 
those have got a design patent it is given only for the shape of the bottles for example shape of the bottles most of your dove bottles they have got a design patent just for the shape which looks something appealing to your eyes fine no functional requirement is required so many people are nowadays filing design patents it is easy to file as well as it is easy to be granted so i have talked about what is design can you can see here your head and shoulder bottles all most of the your shampoo bottles powder bottles some powders they have got design patent only for their appeal only for their uh, the structure no functional part in it next you can see the different shapes of the bottles and all these have been granted with a design patent most of the furnitures nowadays beautiful chairs sofa sets you can just uh, reverse the chair and see they if they have got a patent that design number will be written there so from now on you can just note any furniture by seeing itself if you feel that this could have got a design patent means you just turn that reverse it there will be a number there design number so which means that particular product has got a design patent so these are all the design even designs are given for your um, floors marbles your tiles you can see the tile floorings here even those things have got if it is very beautiful and appealing to the eyes you can apply for a design patent once it is granted they will give you a number and you can have that number on your product your bottles water bottles also have got a design patent your ornaments jewelries nowadays most of the jewelries are getting design patent fine right? now what is the criteria to get that who grants it the headquarters is in kolkata and chennai has got these are all the branch offices chennai mumbai and delhi this is how your design patent looks once your design is there this is how it looks a granted design patent what is the requirement you need to submit the top view side view rear view front view left side in all the dimensions in all the angles you need to write about the views how the product looks so that is the mandatory requirement to get your design patent i have just talked about a plate an alignment plate or porcelain plate with beautiful designs has got as design patent like this so many plates have got so many vessels have got design patent so what is the basic requirement you need to talk about that product in all angles this we would have done in our engineering graphics you need to talk about it side view top view front view back view all the views how it looks so those things has to be clearly defined in your design application who wants it any person any person who is interested to file or any legal representative or the assignee will hold the design patent what is required to file in your idea should be new that design should be new it should not be disclosed to the public how you are so many plates are there with different design how you are able to distinguish it how different your design is from others so that is called as a distinguishable part how you can apply it to an article and is it really having some visual appeal these are all the exceptions you cannot go and have a design patent for your greeting cards postcards your flags your national flags emblems national symbols all these are exceptions how long does it last your design patent is valid for 10 years if you renew it is it is again valuable for another 5 years so totally it is 15 years patent has a validity of 20 years application filing so this i have already discussed form 1 2 3 5 is mandatory this i have already discussed and you can see there form 3 fees is not required form 5 fees is not required and form 18 what is form 18 if your application goes for examination you want to examine your application then you need to form 518 if you want to go for early publication then go for form 9 so all these are different forms available so e filing what is e filing if you are going 
for electronic filing. There are two types of filing. One is your physical filing. Another one is your e-filing. Physical filing is you directly go to the patent office and do things. That is physical filing. E-filing can be done by you or Dominantly, it is done with the help of patent agents. E-filing, the fees is comparatively less when compared to physical filing. These are all the different fees available. As I have already said, up to 30 pages and 10 claims, it is free. Beyond that, if you go, then you need to pay for per page and per claim. So this is your filing procedure wherein I have shared, with you, shared you with the portal for e-filing. So this is majoritily used by your patent agents and attorneys. For e-filing, you need to have a digital signature. If you don't have a digital signature for e-filing, then it is not going to work. Okay. This is your portal, how it looks for e-filing. And these are all the basic timelines which I have already discussed. Provisional to complete within 12 months, you have to do it. Request for examination. You have filed one application. Within 48 months, you need to examine you need to give a form that is form 18 you should request for examination if you miss out the timelines your application is abandoned or withdrawn and office is giving you objections that is fer report you need to reply back within six months if you go beyond six months then again it is abandoned that's all the application validity is gone form 3 has to be filed within six months from the date of filing five is within one month you need to file if again you have applied something you need to withdraw means you can withdraw within 15 months after 15 months it will be in the public domain you cannot do anything you have disclosed your information say suppose now you are in the state that i need to withdraw my application you can it is giving a provision for even for that it has to be done within 15 months after that if you go and ask in the parent office they would have already that in the public domain hearing again within 15 days they will notify you and if you don't want the hearing also you need to tell them 15 days before grant opposition that is before the grant post grant is once the patent is granted you can go for post grant that is up to one year you can oppose so once a patent is granted this is how they will give a certificate patent office gives you a certificate which will look like this and it has got much value and the points to remember, first you protect with the help of patent, then you go for publishing. You go for a patent, then you go for publishing in any journal. Patent is a territorial right. If you have a patent in India, it is applicable, enforceable only in India, not in any other country. If you want the same concept to be protected in US, then go and file a patent there. Fine. Once in India means it is applicable, enforceable only in India. So that is why it is called as territorial right. It is a right for a limited period of time. Patent is applicable only for 20 years, not more than that. Provided you should have, a, you should pay the fees and maintain it. So this is a patent life cycle. First you will file, it will be published. If you want early publication, go for form 9. Within one week, it will be published. If you don't want early publication, then after 18 months, automatically it will be published then you it has to be examined with the help of form 18 within 48 months you need to apply for that once it is examined it, they will go for a fer and office will give you a first examination report that is here get all your objections that this is right this is wrong so many mistakes in our application whether it can be technically or the grammatically the way you write the claims everything will be the patent office is having some 71 objections to be raised and it is better that you receive only few objections so that you write your application properly once fair is given to you within six months you need to reply for that fair applicant needs to reply response to the fair after that they will decide whether to accept or reject your application then once it is accepted you need to maintain it with the help of paying a fees if you don't maintain it it will be lapsed and finally it will be terminated after 20 years so this is expedited examination. What is expedited? There is something called Form 18A, wherein examination can be done quickly. Expedited means fast examination. That provision is given for the following people. If your company is a startup company or if it is a small entity, 
say suppose there are several applicants in an application if at least one applicant is a female then you can go for expedited examination that is a privilege given for the women candidates at least one applicant is a female then you can go for expedited examination all your government applications are examined examined quickly so all these are the various conditions under which you can go for expedited examination so this is a small information in india chandigarh university is the highest filing chandigarh university fine and top 3 states for filing patent applications is first is your maharashtra with 4000 second is your tamil nadu and third one is your karnataka fine and among companies it is samsung 1000 applications are being uh, fine now this is your research function so what is a research function whenever there is a research there is a new knowledge from the new knowledge several products and services are arising so you are protecting that now why ipr is called a superpower i have given there even if there is a simple research a basic research that involves new technologies that creates new industries 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 create new jobs jobs create wealth and that is called a super super power and that is what our modi ji is trying for he is giving more importance for patents and nowadays filing fees is also being reduced for individuals as well as for the universities so what is this nirf i told i will talk about some importance of patents in your national rankings your nirf nac nba all give importance for patents not only for published patents for granted patents your nirf ranking one important thing is you can see that you should have quality patents and projects rpc nirf has got some research and professional practices which includes quality patents so that is why people are filing more patents now nac team you know what is we all work for we are all in colleges and we work for the nac and nba work so they give importance for patents number of patents obtained obtained means granted patents it is not just filing and publishing it is for your granted patents next to your ugc and aict all these are bodies governing the colleges and universities nowadays they are giving more importance for the patents you can see there aict is going for some ipr cell in every college every college you can see some ipr cell is being functioning nowadays and even your ugc providing some important syllabus for your iprs to be included in the curriculum now what are the i'll speak about some career opportunities you can go for a government job in the indian patent office as an examiner in patents and designs in trademark and uh, geographical indications or examiner for copyrights others you can become a patent agent or patent attorney what is the difference between agent and attorney agent will pass the patent agent exam attorney will also do that provided attorney will have some extra degree of law bachelor of law that law degree will be there with the attorney but not with the patent agent that is the only difference whereas up to hearing a patent agent can go to the patent office and fight for the invention attorney will also do the same thing if the uh, uh, applicant is not satisfied with the patent office he can go to the court for some solution so dealing with the court can be done by patent attorneys or you can become trademark agents in our days we have got this junior research fellow and senior research fellow in patent facilitation centers government has started so many patent facilitation centers where in facilitation centers they do the filing for free for the startups and small entities fine and this is your kapila what is this kalam program for ip literacy and awareness they give funds for you to file your patents in colleges nowadays most of the colleges are having this you just need to have your invention i told that you need to pay fees to the government that fees is being paid by or it is refunded by either you pay the fees and then you get a reimbursement or you get a fund from the government to file your invention so that is your kapila so this can be utilized by many colleges and many are already being utilized and this is a small video if time permits i will show so thank you all for patiently listening me and uh, any queries you can ask me now i hope i have exceeded a time by 10 minutes
Gladys. Uh, audience, are you able to hear me? Any uh, queries? Was the session useful to you? Really, it is very useful, madam. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, how to grant, get the grant, we have no idea, ma'am. But after attending your sessions, uh, we are able to uh, apply, ma'am. We know up to the publishing level, ma'am. Uh, okay, for granting, what are the fe features uh, you have told, ma'am? Thank you okay, so much. Ma Thank you, ma'am. receiving few comments thank you for patiently listening to me uh, if you have any queries you can ask uh, i am reading your chat box there are few queries here i will reply you He received one question. Uh, like I will read out the question and I will answer, sir. Uh, like one minute. Can we design patent a new found device mentioning their sensor and actuators, or we should go for idea patent only, uh, sir? Uh, you are finding some device, so that is something technical. So you need to go for patent only. So something, some technical concept is there means you need to go only for a patent. Something which is appealing to the eyes, which has got some beautiful design. Then only you need to proceed towards design patent. I hope I have answered your question, sir. One more question. If a patent got filed with some group of members, not rejected can we file the same updated patent with different set of members yes ma'am whatever uh, vanita ma'am has asked this question uh, yes you can do it ma'am priority you have filed earlier uh, now what you're telling is got rejected okay so that chapter is closed it got rejected means that chapter is closed now the again same thing you need not file again you need to have some modifications over the previous one. Something updated. Again, you can file as a new patent, ma'am. So that is Vanita ma'am's question. Uh, is it clear, ma'am? I hope I have answered. Uh, ma'am, one more question from Dr. Resmi, ma'am. How many inventors will be considered for NIRF and NAT? Ma'am, as such, I will tell. A patent application can have even 20 uh, members in it. All the 20 have got equal rights. It is not like our journal publication wherein the first author has the highest weightage and the 10th author has got the least weightage. This is the scenario of our journal publications. Everyone wants to be the first author or second, not beyond that. Fine, ma'am. When coming to our patents, that's what I told, even if there are 20 members in a single application, all the 20 get equal rights. And for NIRF, and you are asking, that criteria I will check and I will get back to you, ma'am. Because as such, there is no criteria. But then if they have changed any rules, I will uh, I will get back to you, ma'am. As such, there is no, uh, there is no uh, count in the numbers, ma'am. How many inventors? There is no count in the numbers because patent office itself is giving equal rights for everyone so the others have no rights to stop fine ma'am uh, any more uh, questions i am just uh, checking the chat box
there is no questions, so let's yeah. move with the vote of thanks now. Oh, yeah, okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. It gives me an immense pleasure to propose vote of thanks today to express my heartfelt gratitude on behalf of the entire department for the second day of research tools FTP. We have just concluded an enriching and enlightening experience that wouldn't have been possible without the dedication and support of numerous individuals and groups. First and foremost, I would like to thank our beloved HOD, Mrs. T. Kalai Selvima, and all our department staffs who have been the pillar of strength, mentor, and also upholder the event. Next, I would like to, uh, like to extend a sincere gratitude to the esteemed Dr. Safiya Navid, ma'am, who graced today with her invaluable insights, ma'am. Your willingness to share your expertise and experience has left an indelible impression on each of us, ma'am. We are immensely grateful for your time, enthusiasm, and dedication in enlightening, enlightening the patent drafting and filling. And special thanks goes to all the participants who actively engaged in the FTP program. Your eager, eagerness to learn, ask questions, and participate in various activities had made this program dynamic and rewarding. It's your enthusiasm and commitment to professional growth that fuels the success of such initiatives. We are indebted to the management of Ishwara Engineering College for their unwavering support and encouragement in organizing this FTP. Thank you all once again making the second day of FTP a resounding success. Let us carry forward this momentum into the remaining days of the program and beyond. Wishing you all a productive and enlightening FTP again. Thank you all. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, you are not audible, ma'am. Ma'am, I thank one and all for listening to my session patiently. And I once again thank HOD ma'am and Dr. Nirmala ma'am and all everyone for giving me an opportunity for presenting a session in International FTP. Thank you all. I request all the participants to fill the feedback, uh, feedback form that has been posted in chat box. Please fill the feedback form that has been posted in chat box. Participants, please make sure that you fill your feedback form.